Xavier, and today we're going to check out the work of Victor Cloaks or Clue Cloaks. Um, he's based in Shanghai, China, right? And he does have a very interesting way of painting. I would actually put him in the category of um, Craig Mullins, where he's a bit he likes to use the round brush a lot, um, but not totally. In that he likes to kind of vary up the brush strokes, um, kind of like Lixin Yin. He's another kind of a artist that's in the category of he's in that area where Craig Mullins and Lixin Yin and and John Wallenberto is at. You know where they like like the the main brush I think would be a round brush would be a simple round brush, and um, with a few other brushes to kind of a uh, complement. Um, that. Um, I actually do like his sketches more, or his like quick speed paintings. Um, obviously they're a bit more impressionistic, right? They're a bit more direct, and uh, he does like to build some atmosphere. Oh, he's also very similar, or his work is very similar to the work of J. Chael Park. Um, he also likes to use the round brush. Um. And both of them, Victor Cloaks or Clo Cloaks, and J Ch J Chael Park, they like to build some atmosphere using some very very soft brushes. So you can see this kind of gradient thing going on um, whenever um, environments are being done, right? Um, so it's not it's not a totally harsh kind of hard edged kind of painting. Um, there's a bit of variety in terms of soft and hard edges. Um, and again, I do like the fact that, or I do like the way he does his quick paintings or, sketch, or sketches. Because I think even with a small, or with a kind of a quick rough painting, if it communicates the idea well, that's kind of enough for um, storytelling. Because not everything has to be highly um, rendered or detailed. Um, I mean, it, dep it depends obviously on what's being asked of you, but... If you're trying to figure out what exactly to do, let's say you just want to focus more on storytelling, it doesn't have to be super um, refined, right? Um, I mean, just focusing on the silhouettes, on the lighting, it's kind of enough to show what the, the story or what the piece is about. Um, and again, very bold strokes, very direct. Um, here you can actually see him use the soft brush in this area, in this kind of highlight. Everything else is kind of direct. Um, and I don't think he's the guy that uses a lot of layers. I mean, obviously, as the painting gets more complicated, he's going to use more and more. But I feel like he's more direct in a way. Because um, I can see more of his strokes. Because sometimes you can actually tell if someone uses a lot of layers where all you have to do is kind of focus on the silhouette of a certain subject. And if it's too sharp and clean, it's probably done in its own layer, right? I, I don't have anything against layering, but I myself try to be a bit more direct. Um, it does help save time, but I try to avoid using too much because it, it just ends up taking away from the momentum of painting. Um, and with this painting right here, it's pretty quick, but it does tell a bit of the story. Or it has a bit of story. It's obviously kind of in action, right? It's not a static pose. Um, and he does like to add a bit of atmosphere with the lighting, right? It's kind of a sunset. Um, or this whole scene is set in a sunset kind of time. Um, and again, it's, it's not super refined, very almost heavy on the silhouettes, heavy on the shapes. Um, and just enough to kind of uh, say something. And that's actually what I'm trying to, um, what I think I should focus more on. Because I'm always kind of going back and forth between, you know, going into more detail and, um, or focusing more on storytelling. But I do think I need to just be more direct and focus on just trying to say something. Even with this simple, small painting, um, there's some, it's actually kind of hard to tell what this thing is, but it's, um, it's trying to say something, right? Hmm. <laughs> This is a nice scene. It's an interior scene and it's kind of a quiet scene, right? You can see some dust particles here, some kind of opening perhaps in the ceiling. And you can see this nice dash 
um, of light and uh, even the way the tiling or the tiles were done in the background or in this kind of wall it's actually kind of clean and it's almost a flat illustration the perspective is actually kind of simple and yeah it helps too with the verticals and horizontal lines with the tiles but yeah and he, he doesn't always use the round brush i just see it as a kind of common thing in his work he likes to use the same or that sim that's very simple brush um, as his main perhaps sculpting brush but he does employ a lot of brushes to get that varied look um, kind of like Craig Mullins and it does look cool like it, 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 it not only has brush variety but with that it, yeah his work also does have hue variety like if you focus in say on this flooring it's not just a brown you can actually see some blues some yellows some greens so it's kind of a full color right if something has like one main hue plus a different plus additional kind of desaturated or slightly saturated or slightly desaturated um hues it just feels more full right instead of it being like a solid one solid color um i feel like it adds more life when you have a variation of hues included you can have like a solid a main hue kind of like a for, in this case for example in this area right here it's i can see the main kind of hue is kind of a red but within that there are a lot of other hues like greens and oranges and yellows here so just adding a bit of extra hues um i think helps and again it's not a finished painting um it's very simple in a way in terms of how it's painted i guess but it communicates something there is some kind of story that's happening the atmosphere the mood it's it's saying something it's not just a simple kind of line sketch um it actually makes you want to uh imagine things right um so this one's more of a piranha scene i think he started off with a wash um, for the background and I think he did use some kind of soft brush or a few gradient type brushes to set the mood of the the, uh, the kind of underwater kind of feel and then everything else uh, this character and the fish or the piranhas are piranhae piranhae <laughs> are uh, I think they're done in their own layer to kind of help um, it's actually a bit more efficient if you do separate things a bit um, but again I try to avoid doing too much of it um, because if you use a lot of layers, you, you'll actually, for me, I actually I actually tend to lose track of the amount of layers I have, and um, yeah. Very simple environment sketch, but again, the mood is there, lots of atmosphere going on, and it does feel big. Um, I think it's because of the mist, like that foggy kind of atmosphere, that cloudy atmosphere. Um, and maybe also the way he plays with the levels is what makes it actually um it makes it look big um there's this nice even uh, gradation of values darker here gets slightly lighter here and then it goes further back and then eventually you can see this very very dim well not dim but a very light shade or fade of the of this kind of thing here and it's kind of a nice even gradation of values well, even, this is a pretty small painting sketch, but it does communicate the mood. It's in an underground, I feel like it's in, in, in an underground kind of environment. There's some kind of lighting here um, coming from the top. And the focus is obviously on this guy walking about this um, tunnel, right? And there are folks in kind of sitting around, maybe waiting for something. Um, it's kind of an informal place, perhaps. And, um, yeah, very, very impressionistic way of painting. <laughs> so this one's actually more of a character um, sketch, a painting concept, um, a knight. And again, it's super cool because you can actually see his uh, brush strokes. He doesn't go overboard. I mean, he does have a few pieces in the end where he does... Um, render things out a bit more to a to, to a pretty much a full illustration um but i actually do like um his sketches more or his quick paintings or speed paintings because it shows you what you can achieve with not having something fully painted right 
a nice kind of horror silhouette in the background. Um, and yeah, if you focus, you know, on the hands, the arm, everything is kind of most most of it is just suggested, and you can kind of fill in the gaps um, for him, right? Well, I think this is the first piece that I found, or this is what the piece I found somewhere I think in Pinterest that introduced me to uh, Victor Clues cloaks portfolio on ArtStation, and I just love the fact that it had everything. Like it was this sketch of this um, dinosaur skeleton was just so varied in terms of the hues and the brushstrokes. This was this actually inspired me even more to uh, get on that impressionistic train, you know, that kind of um, not fully rendered look, more of a sketchy, impressionistic, kind of a mixed media, almost like a mixed media kind of look. Um, and I'm pretty sure he did the, the dinosaur is set, or the skeleton is um, set on its own layer to save time. Um, but yeah, pretty cool, right? I mean, look at how each bone is not fully rendered out. It's just suggested, but if you kind of see everything from afar, it looks right. You know, it looks cool. It looks like there's something happening. Um, and even the, the way it plays with the, the with the, uh, I'm not sure if this is some kind of study or some kind of imagina imagination um, based thing, but I like the light sources here. The pink coming from, say, an artificial light. And maybe some kind of yellowish light from the bottom to kind of showcase the skeleton. Maybe this is in a museum, right? Obviously, usually they are in a museum. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, another character sketch. And a lot of round brush use here. Um, but again, he was still able to communicate the idea of this Viking type of character. Um, uh, with some rough indication of the the environment in the background. Uh, so this one is some kind of scene. Um, so he does use a lot of brushes here. Uh, maybe he does. He did use a photo here in the back to kind of fill in this kind of structural detail. Well, not detail, but to add in some structural information, I'll say that. And, um, excuse me. Some smoke brushes here to add a bit of misty atmosphere. Um, this one feels more painterly though because of the, the brushes that he used. Or he used, or he uses, or he used. Fuck. Um, yeah. And again, it's, it's a pretty small painting. It's not a full illustration, but it's enough to tell a story. Um, I feel like he does better in key. I mean, he can pretty much do anything, I think. Um, he does do characters, some environments, but I think a lot of his stuff involves, like, movement, uh, keyframe type of artwork. Um, not just in his sketches, which is the bulk of his work, the, the kind of quick paintings like this one, but also in his more fuller illustrations. They're kind of like keyframes, like they're part of a, a frame of some kind of film. Um, and again, the hand is not fully rendered here. Everything is suggested. The folds, um, the armor, highlights. Um, this is some kind of eye. Even the background is kind of very abstract and just very artsy. Um, and I kind of want to develop this look because I feel like it fits me the most. If there's something I can do, I think it would be this kind of thing where just fast, like speed painting type of stuff. Um, but obviously sometimes, you know, people will look for more developed work. So I don't know if I should expand my skill sets or just focus in on specific things that I actually like. Um, but anyway, anyway, um, so this is more of a keyframe, I think. It's some person shooting someone. Some indication of blood. Um, nice lighting in the back. Um, you can actually see the flash from the gun, reflected on the helmet, so that's kind of nice. Um, oh, kind of a soft light and a highlight right here, so that's nice. Um, and again, not everything is rendered, uh, no clear, like, definitive painting, rendering parts, right? Everything is suggested. 
it's very sketch like and impressionistic. <laughs> now this one's actually a bit sharper, I think. Um, lots of light sources. Well, not lots. Well, not lots. Well, not lots of light sources, but I feel like there's so many kind of light spots. I'll say that. Um, this one does feel a bit more epic. Um, not exactly a keyframe. It could be, but the the frame itself is in portrait mode, so this could be some kind of cover um, for something. Even the way he did this kind of statue in the background, it's just a silhouette, but the lighting, the rough indication of the arms, the pose of the arm, plus this kind of sword, it just, it's enough to tell a story, right? Even with this statue right here. Um, very, very epic looking. Awesome. Um, he could have, like, developed this a bit more to a fuller painting, but even with this kind of rough, it's not a totally rough, it's kind of a rough sketch painting, but it's still pretty good. Like, the, the anatomy is kind of there. It's better than mine. <laughs> um, rough indication of the armor, and not everything was rendered in the armor. Um, like, he focused on this side of the body and not on this side, because obviously this is way closer. So it just makes more sense. If something is kind of symmetrical, all you have to do is just focus on one side and then the, the person seeing your artwork can just kind of visualize and fill in the gaps on the other side, right? So not everything has to be painted. Again, um, I like the shadow here and the arm. Uh, this is shadow being casted by the armor. So you can see this part of the, the arm or the upper arm that's kind of being hit with light. So it does help to make this sketch a bit more 3D-ish. Or have more form. And even the face is not fully rendered, but the the light and the darks are just painted in the right areas to kind of suggest a a human-like face. And a lot of it is a, a play of edges. For example, in this nose right here, it's actually a sharp edge, right? So I think some knowledge in anatomy will help you be more efficient with the way you um, kind of do your soft and hard edges and where you put them exactly, or where exactly you uh, place them appropriately, you know? And again, hue variety. For example, in this shoulder armor, you can actually see some purples, some greens, and some reds. It's not just one color. Um, now he does mainly use the round brush for this piece, but I think I can see other brushes. Um, for example, you can see in the background there's this, there's a br kind of like a rake brush that has like bigger spacing a bit, so you can see that brush spacing there. Um, but then again, most of it is um, kept simple when it comes to the brush variety. Um, um, this one's actually a pretty small sketch. <laughs> Or painting. I'm not sure if this was- I, I think he painted this bigger and then he uh, resized it to such a small, kind of almost like a thumbnail kind of look. Or size. Um, or like a storyboard kind of size. Although it, it, it is a bit more developed for a storyboard. It's uh, kind of like a keyframe shot. A very wide shot. Um, but yeah. Awesome. This one's more of a keyframe again. This actually reminds me of Victor Hugo um, Harmatiuk, 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 the Brazilian concept artist. Because uh, he does like to use the flat brush and whenever I see someone use some kind of flat brush in a directional mode in Photoshop, um, it reminds me of Victor Hugo Harmatiuk. Tiuk. Tuk. Um, and again, very, very impressionistic. Which is something that I like. And look at how the bike is uh, rendered. Not all of the parts are kind of um, clean and cut, but it's enough for the viewer to understand, oh shit, this is a bike and this guy is maybe holding a gun or something. Even, even the hand here is not even developed. Like you can't even see the gun, but just because of the pose and how it feels, it feels like this guy is pointing something to someone or something. 
So this one's more of a character sketch, more of a head sketch. It's um, it has a xenomorph kind of feel, especially when it comes to the elongated um, skull in the back. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's kind of its own thing. Very very scary. Um, but again, not fully developed as a painting, but it's a bit tight. It's a bit more rendered in this part, especially. But yeah, it's enough to kind of say something about this creature thing. So he did develop the face more for this guy. The eyes a bit, you know, developed the face. Obviously, it's kind of like a zombie thing. Um, the further you go away from the main focus, it becomes more abstract and impressionistic. And again, he likes the round brush. That's kind of his fave brush. Um, with a few extra brushes for the clouds, the atmosphere, some texture brushes. Um, but yeah. And again, the hue variety is there. It's not just one solid color. For example, for this um, fabric here, you can actually see some pink, some purple, some reds. And maybe even a few greens. Ooh. Now the face is, isn't actually fully developed, but you can actually kind of feel something. Like this guy, uh, this alien is kind of glowing, luminescent in some way. Um, suggestion of some kind of armor or um, suit. Kind of like an exoskeleton thing. And then he does have an actual suit with fabric underneath. Um, now maybe he did use a photo for the, the earth here in the background. Um, even the, the, sh the ship, the shuttle, is done very simply with the round brush. Uh, maybe he did blur a photo or something and then painted over it to kind of make it his own thing. Which is actually a very interesting technique to try out. Because you can, you know, get the color the colors from the photo but also get some of that information and just refine it yourself right um and again another character shot um yeah pretty cool pretty pretty cool another character shot um now this one does feel more painterly because he doesn't even use the round brush a lot for this piece um maybe he does have the pen pressure on for because you can use the pen pressure for many options in the brush settings but there is a kind of like a, uh, an area where if you do hit pen pressure, the brush kind of squiggles around, right? And I think is using that feature to get that more painterly look. Um, and yeah. And it doesn't really matter because it still feels like it's his work. Um, a lot of his work isn't super saturated. Uh, they feel more natural. Um, in a way. Right? You could say they're slightly desaturated, um, a bit uh, not dull. Maybe dull is not the right word because they're actually kind of lively. But he's not like polluting your mind or your eyes with like colors. You know, he's just keeping it simple. Um, yeah. Rough indications of the folds in the fabric in this kind of robe thing. Um, and maybe he did this ring in its own layer. Perhaps to kind of be more safe and uh, nice highlight here because obviously the light source is coming from this side and I like how the heart isn't so bright because like if you see this piece from far um, you actually see this part of the robe because it has the, most of the contrast but at second glance you can kind of see this glowing thing it's kind of hard so that's kind of a nice um, extra bit of information once the person actually want gets to uh, explore the piece more, right? This is some kind of ship, a uh, rough indication in the background of an environment city, cityscape, right? Um, lots of worms here in the bottom of the, of the ship. Maybe it's um, about to land or just landing. Or maybe it's about to take off. You can see some suggestion of smoke. 
Uh, nice complimentary thing. The bottom is kind of warm again, and the top is more bluish. Even the sky is kind of reflected on this top part of the ship. Um, and even the ship is not fully designed, but there is feel. You know, you can get the feeling of the ship. And it's very, very impressionistic, right? So that's always a good thing for me. Um, maybe some photo textures, perhaps, for the ground. Um, very, very impressionistic again. Um, it, it just has its appeal when it's um, a bit um, chaotic, right? I mean, I like smooth stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just remembering um, Sakimi Chan's work. It's very, very rendered, very high quality. Um, like, her work is meant to be printed, I think. <laughs> but I still fall. Or I'm more into this sort of thing sometimes, or most of the time, where it's a bit rough and raw, you know, um, and imperfect. Maybe it's a personality thing, I can't say, but uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, and again, uh, this is a nice suggestion of a room. Uh, at night, perhaps. Maybe his own living room. I can't say, but awesome, awesome, awesome. And look at that! Most of it is, was done with a round brush. Um, kind of a boss move. Same with this. This could be some kind of study of a statue. Oh, I actually like seeing stuff like this where the artist kind of paints or sketches their um, station or like this uh, in a way this is kind of practicing storytelling even though there's no subject the fact that you've painted a tablet and a pen and a laptop on the side that speaks to so many other artists and of course the room is dark we usually paint in our caves right so there is a bit of storytelling that's happening here um, And I actually, uh, I'm trying to uh, do more quick kind of doodles, even with like lines, not just, I, it doesn't have to be painted, but I want to just get more into that storytelling where I, where maybe I can paint me painting shit or something, you know? Because I feel like that's made way more therapeutic and even interactive for other people to see. Because if I just paint like a hot chick, like, you know, it's, it's cool, but... You know, like, I'm not I'm not always... You know what, I can pick the hot chick, but I should say something with it. It just, it can't just be like boobs and butt, you know? It has to tell a story, you know? It has to make you feel something. So these are more dragon stuff. And again, not fully painted, not fully rendered. They're more, oh, it's a bit developed. Well, not really, but... Um, the idea is there, the story is there, you know? There is an aspect to art that's about storytelling. You know, because it's the thing that makes it relatable, right? Um, so another interior scene in a museum, perhaps. Uh, this actually reminds me of the work of Yang Qi or Qi Yang. Um, Qi Yang likes to use more. I mean, he, he likes to use a round brush, but in his more recent work, he likes to use a very painterly kind of brush, and his work tends to have that sharpness. Especially in his more recent work. Um, but yeah. So another character sketch. More of a headshot. Or a half body shot. And again, not fully defined. But some suggestion of the costume. Or fashion attire thing. And, um, and I just like I like seeing the strokes that's happening right now. And again, the hue variety. The greens with some reds. So it's kind of a complementary thing. The green and the red. And they're not saturated too much um they're kind of in the they fall more into the desaturated side so it's not blinding your eyes with the hues it's kind of feeding you you can even see some blues in the bottom um even here a bit in the highlights in this kind of light part um the face isn't even fully developed but because maybe he understands the basic structure of a face he knows where to put the, the lighter values, or he knows where to put 
where the lighter values ought to be to kind of suggest the form of the face. Like you can see this entire part right here is just one value. And you can see this kind of bluish, blue-green, bluish kind of lighter value to kind of suggest the mouth, the top part of the mouth and the bottom part of the mouth here a bit. And again, it's, a, it's, more, it's more of a quick rough painting sketch, speed painting, right? Same for this guy. Um, some basic atmosphere in the background. Well, not just in the background, but it's kind of hitting the, the actual character a bit. So it's kind of directly on top of the this kind of um, alien with armor or some kind of person in an armor, I think. Um, look at that. It's so well painted. Not super defined, super cut. It, it it's kind of it does have a bit of edge control, like you can tell which part is from the other parts surrounding it. Um, so there is a bit of clarity that's happening, but the way it's rendered out, the way it's painted, it's very very lively and just impressionistic. <laughs> Ooh, now this character is just kind of a standalone character, nothing in the background, just a gray, simple background. But I like seeing the sharpness in some areas. Um, lots of brush variety. Um, he likes to use the dashy kind of stroke, kind of like a Lion Decker kind of way of rendering things. Um, and I think he did use some kind of mixer brush here. I'm mean, look at the sharp um, shadow here, the sharp edge of the shadow, and then it becomes softer as you go on top. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the whole edge control thing, like which part should be kind of soft and which part should be hard. You know, it's kind of, it's, I'm still not fully developed in that basic aspect of painting, but um, I'll get there. I do like the flooring here though. It's it's very, very... Like, you, you can see the suggestion of this area behind this character or king in the floor. Although it's kind of in a different hue, because maybe the floor has its own characteristics, right? Um, and um, it's kind of a symmetrical piece, so that's pretty interesting. Um, I'm not sure if he used the, the mirror function in Photoshop, because I feel like this was done way before Photoshop had that feature. So, yeah. Another keyframe shot. I mean, it, it, everything is suggested. Suggested. It's very rough, but even the hues, the colors used are very realistic. They're not bright, they're not kind of neon-ish. Uh, very, 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 very realistic. And again, simple guy, the pose with the gun tells you something about what's happening. And the caution tape, right, it's enough. Uh, like, bits of information like this is enough to kind of add, suggest a story. Right now, this one feels more developed. It actually looks like some kind of wallpaper to me. And I think he did use the lens correction filter uh, in Photoshop to achieve the uh, the kind of shift in the blues and reds or greens and reds. Um, but yeah, he's more of a painter, so it, it transfers well to. Um, like whenever he does something that's a bit more of an illustration, it still feels like a painting. Um, now this is actually way more developed, like his most recent pieces are more developed. Um, and I do suggest you actually go to his art station, because he does show like the step-by-step -step thing, or phase of the painting, so that's pretty kind of helpful. Um, and it does, he knows how to bring it, I mean he could have stopped like midway in this process, and that would have been enough. To kind of tell the story, but he like I, mean, I don't know, maybe it's a shift in his um, goals or something, or maybe project needs. Um, he does, or he did bring a few of his pieces to a more finished kind of look, where it's a bit more tight. I mean, you can still see the brush variety, the hue variety. It does feel a bit more impressionistic, but it's a bit more defined, I guess. Um, right. And even the way he does the lighting is pretty interesting. Um, he could have just photo bashed, but he decided to just paint it. And it does look cool when he actually paints um, 
like it feels rich. And seeing all those small strokes shows you how he sculpted each part um, bit by bit. And it does have an appeal. Um, I mean, you, you could charge so much for something like this. I mean, this, for me, this could like take a, <laughs> like a week. Or maybe two weeks for me, but um, for this guy, maybe, I don't know, a day? I don't know, maybe a few days, perhaps? Um, but you could charge like a thousand bucks for this beautiful thing. Uh, and obviously, there's this kind of assassin, perhaps? Kind of hiding or something? Or is he even hiding? I, I can't tell. <laughs> Because the, the the lizards are kind of seeing him on top, and this guy as well is kind of seeing him as well. So I can't say if he's doing a good job of hiding. Um, oh, maybe he did use some photos a bit, but most of it is like ninety nine percent of it is painted. Um, oh, this reminds me of one of the pieces of John Park. Uh, for Ma the Mandalorian season one, just seeing all these kind of shades and the marketplace kind of look reminds me of that piece of John Park uh, for the Mandalorian season one. Um, and again, an another kind of keyframe storytelling piece by Victor Cloaks Clo. And I do like how his signature is just a V. <laughs> very very bold move. Um, uh, yeah. And again, lots of details here. Um, it's a bit refined the painting, obviously. Mm, but here, the details in this, for example, in this area alone, Christ, and it looks so real. I mean, it's not like hyper realistic, but it does have. It leans more towards realism. Um, not a lot of uh, characterization in or stylistic stuff. Even the ground is painted well. Jesus. And I do like seeing the small strokes. It shows you that he, he does goes in and refine things. Um, so seeing those small, those small brush strokes is very, very cool. Um, so this masked guy is obviously trying to run away from someone. And this other masked guy is kind of watching, perhaps? Kind of on the sideline, maybe. Um, but just seeing his like process, process shots, uh, it kind of gives you confidence on how if you just took your time, you could actually reach this kind of level of um, art if you just took your, took your time and just painted things. Even this guy right here, you can see his armor, it's roughly suggested. You can actually see the brush spacing here, right? And some indication of the, the armor texture. Um, and that's kind of enough because obviously this guy is not the main focus. It's obviously this area right here, this character, and um, yeah. And even the shot is dynamic. You're seeing it from the bottom, from, from the ground. Um, and for this piece, you're actually seeing it from the top. Now this one again is a marketplace kind of area. And most of it is, I think, painted. Maybe some photos, I can't tell. It's hard to say. But I am confident in his painting skills, so I wouldn't doubt if he painted this entire thing in the first place. Um, so this guy, this masked guy again. Some kind of a butcher here. Um, rough indication of the faces. And that's kind of enough to tell the story. Nice big head. Link, link. Um, and again, very, very impressionistic. It's very rough. It's not like super cut edges. He doesn't use. I don't think he uses like a lot of layers to plan everything out. I think he just is a very direct kind of painter. Um, now this does feel very, very refined and sharp. And maybe he did just a few photos here. I think. Um. Yeah, it's so refined compared to his other work. I do think he did use a few photos here. Some basic photo bashing, but... 
given his painting skills, I think it just it just complements his work even more. Um, so this this guy could be some kind of witch carrying a baby. This camel is kind of dead. It has a white eye, so it's carrying some kind of ball. Very very eerie. Um, maybe some kind of nomadic tribe, like a magical kind of tribe. Yeah, I think he did use some basic photo bashing here to add a bit more that that extra bit of realism, right? Even the clouds are awesome. It's it, he picked the right photos to kind of get that. I think they're photos, right? Because if he painted this, you know, I, I who knows? Um, I, but but he does have like a process shot of this thing in his art station. Um, so this was actually pretty cool. Um, it's, um, I'm not sure what the red things are about. Maybe they're being controlled or something. Or maybe they are waking up from the Matrix. <laughs> um, and obviously the, the riot police are kind of on the other side uh, with all their lights and their shields and shit. I think they're the police or something, yeah. Um, and obviously these guys are the protesters. Um, is that an American flag? Hey, maybe this is something, or this is something to do with the Hong Kong kind of protests. Um, oh, I like this guy touching his girl's um, but touche. Um, but yeah. And this guy's kind of charging in, very ballsy. Um, press, so this guy's a journalist. I like seeing uh, the details this guy's putting in. Um, I'm pretty sure if I ke kept going in on some of his other works, I'll find a lot more details. Um, I can't actually read this. I can't... Uh, it's hard to read it, but maybe it means something. Um, but yeah. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, she brought her dog. Not sure if that's a good idea, but, uh, yeah. And again, he you can see, if you, if you actually zoom in on his work, he does like to use the round brush. Um, I do like the kind of lens flare, not lens flare, the kind of glare effect from the lens that's happening right now. Um... I'm not sure what these light sources are. Are they trying to blind the protesters? <laughs> Can't say. Um, oh, this guy's kind of like a mech. Like an android. Taking a photo. Um, so. Now this one's more of like an ancient looking thing. Um, lots of skulls in the bottom of this um, table. And even the way the cats are positioned, like they're waiting for something. And this cat, I feel like, is it about to enter the tomb? Like there's such a strong sense of storytelling. Even the way he likes to do this mask thing. Like who is this for? Is it for this guy? Maybe, right? And look at the amount of colors here, the amount of hue, the brush variety, the hue variety, fuck. It's so rich. And that's basically my point. Um, and again, not everything has to be defined. Look at the the things in this shelving. It's very rough, and I can't even tell what it is, but it just helps to fill in the the gaps, right? And it leaves you to imagine it for yourself. He does define things in this area because obviously this is the main focus. Um, I really do like the way the cat is lit, though. Um, this guy has a very nice butt though. No homo. <laughs> am I right? Or am I right? Um, so this chick is obviously some kind of witch. Um, I actually expected him to use the round brush for the feathers. But he's actually a bit more refined. And opaque when it comes to this part. Yeah, it does feel more smoother. To me, it's actually hard to see the brush strokes. 
in this area with these characters right here. And this chick is probably his friend or his babe, kind of giving that concerned look. Um, guard with the beard. Um, this could be a photo that's kind of blurred. I can't say, but you can see some vines. So it does have like a, a witchcraft kind of ancient looking kind of look. Um, and I like the way the leaves are done. Maybe he did use a photo and then just painted it on top of it. Because um, you can actually see a bit of texture, so maybe he did use a photo to help with that. And paint it on top of it to kind of take away or take some of that hue from the leaves from the photo and just make it his. Looks very, very epic to me. Nice elbow though. So he does know a bit of anatomy, obviously. I mean, the way he does his faces as well, it's very realistic. Right? Not very stylized. Um... Oh, so this one's more of a cyberpunk kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I actually like seeing the... Oh, you can't really zoom in in this photo. Or painting. So he can do like a lot of things like sci-fi and fantasy type of stuff. Or historical ancient stuff. Um, so it's pretty varied when it comes to his... Um, themes. So that's nice. Um... Oh, this is kind of like the same guy as the... The protester, right? But this this one is more of a child. Kind of like an android thing. This reminds me of Yi Liu's work. Y I space L I U. He does a lot of like sci-fi sketches. Um, it's a mix of like a painting and a photo bash, and it looks really really cool. It does have the same aesthetic look. Um, so this chick is watching. See, that's another bit of storytelling that's happening. The kid is watching someone. And they're watching something on the news, like some, like some kind of warning is going on, like a public announcement. And maybe, um, oh, this guy as well is seeing what's happening. And maybe this chick knows what's up, and maybe she knows that maybe this guy in the chair is a bad dude, or maybe this guy is being framed or something, I can't say, but very, very awesome. It's a bit high quality. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good thing, but it is kind of overwhelming for me. Um, or a bit intense for me, for now. I, I do want to start off getting good at these sort of things. Right? Just getting, getting the idea out in the first place. Um, and then, as I get better at that, maybe I can do more stuff like this. That's just more refined and just boss level, you know? And I don't think he uses references anymore for the face, because he—I think he just has a nice understanding of shit. Pretty much everything, even the sheep or the goats, look pretty awesome. <laughs> um, it reminds me of uh, Miguel Iglesias, I think. Hopefully, I'm saying his name right, Miguel Iglesias. Um, another concept artist, but he does, like, you know, he starts actually painting the face and then paints the rest of the body, which is kind of an interesting way of doing things. And he, he has, like, a mastery of human anatomy, especially, like, facial expressions. It's just so cool seeing him, seeing him paint. Um, so this is some kind of magic door. So this is set in an Arab world, I think. And there are guards here. Um, this is somewhere in the Middle East, perhaps. The AK-47 is obviously uh, a nice detail there. Um, some kind of magic door. And maybe she's opening it, showing the way. Maybe she's some, some kind of magician, witch. Hmm. Look at how he did like the rest of the background. It's so full of life. Like something is like it feels like it's 
like something is happening like it's an actual like marketplace event right so this is actually his recent piece um very very obviously the chick is a plus um so this is some kind of underground cave lake pond so there's something there's some kind of crystal thing going on here maybe they're giving her powers or something um, and this guy is kind of, um, maybe wants to talk with this chick. Maybe she is some kind of goddess. Oh, you can actually zoom in. Wow! Hey, maybe she is a goddess. Um, oh, look at that hair, though. That's so well done. The bottom line thing, the blues. Uh, I actually don't know how to paint hair, so... Fuck. I like how the, the water is kind of glowing. So it does have some, some kind of magical properties, right? Nice rays of light. And lots of colors here, like you can see some blues, some oranges, and some greens. So it's kind of warmer here, and then it gets cooler here. Because I do think greens are on the cool side. Um, yep. Look at that. Even the face of this guy has a bit of glow coming from the water. And the way the folds are done, it looks so nice. So nice. It looks so sharp. It looks so painted. It's highly finished, highly rendered. And I give this piece a 10 out of 10. Or 11 or 12. Just because, oh, she has tattoos, um, florals, maybe some kind of koi fish somewhere. I can't say. Oh, she's part. It's not just a reflection, like. You can actually see the blue is inside her. Like, she is magic in some way. <laughs> she is magical, I'll say that. Very, very magical. Um, and again, most of it, I think, is painted. Based on my sophisticated observation of skills, most of this is painted. 99.9% .9 of it. It's just him painting everything. Um... So yeah, that's it for this uh, review of Victor Cloaks. Um, I do recommend you follow him on ArtStation. Um, maybe he, I, have, I haven't actually checked um, his like links and shit, but if I find something, I'll share it in the description along with the ArtStation link. Um, yeah, so do follow him if you want to. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Art Review series. Come back, please. Subscribe. Um, and yeah, keep painting and stay free.